Hello and welcome. I noticed when I was doing the straight stitching video that this Singer 760 was quite noisy. I uh, didn't worry about it at the time because I just wanted to get the video done and then I thought I'd take a wee look at what was causing that problem because I've got other 700 series machines that run a lot smoother. Anyway, I didn't quite get the chance to finish the video with this machine. I had to grab the other one because this machine just stopped sewing. It made a bit of a crunching noise and then just jammed up, wouldn't feed and um, I couldn't turn the machine very far at all. I had a look under the hook area and there was thread jammed in there and I thought it was just a thread jam to start with and it turns out it wasn't just a thread jam. What's happened here is you can see that when I turn the wheel the hook is not turning at all. Take the bobbin case out. That's not a good sign. Generally that's an indication that the one of the gears is broken. And when I removed this cover here, I found in the bottom a piece of broken gear. Not a good sign. If we have a close look in this area here, it's quite hard to see because the gear material is quite dark. But right up in here is the broken gear. Yeah. And if we turn the wheel, we can see that it's not turning there. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to get in there and see what's involved in actually you know removing the hook and getting to that gear so that um, we can look at replacing it. I don't have any new replacement parts but I do have uh, some dead and dying machines that I can pull parts out of so at least that's something. Not sure if you can get these parts anymore. Uh, if anyone knows and um, they you know know where to get these parts, uh, comment in the uh, comment section would be appreciated. I might also have a wee look at s and see you know what's involved in sorting this problem here out where this crack is forming in the bobbin winder engaging mechanism there. So I, I don't have any service manual for these machines, and that you know that might be fairly obvious. Uh, so I mean, if anyone has access to the service manual. Uh, a link to a copy would be greatly appreciated or if um, someone could get hold of me directly uh, that would be great. I mean the setting the timing is fairly easy, it's, there's timing marks on the needle bar there, I can show you how all that's done. Let's have a look here and see if we can get this hook out. One thing I noticed was this screw here was loose. Um, it's, it looks like it's a reverse thread so when I uh, turn it clockwise, it's actually unscrewing, which is the opposite to a normal screw. So that's a reverse thread, and that is tight there now, but it was sort of just loose like that. So I'm going to start by taking that off. This section here is all to do with the bobbin winding mechanism, uh, but this plate here that comes off if you just lift the front. This side should pop out or go just forward as far as you can and it pops out from the spring here. You can take that plate off. That's part of the bobbin winding system. Pay to take the feed dog off as well. Get rid of the shank here. I think this feed dog's... Oh actually that one's not too bad. Yeah I think it's on the other 760 I have the feed dog's pretty well shot. Rubber coating's starting to come off them. dogs there. Yeah they don't look too bad. That little lever just flips back so that'll create enough clearance to get bits and pieces here out. There is a spring there. It's held in there so I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I won't bother taking that out right now. This bobbin winding disc here will come out reverse thread. So the plan will be to lift this hook out and you know we want to get these bits and pieces out of the way so this latch here will have to come out as will this. That's reverse thread as well. So a few things here that are reverse thread. Yeah that makes sense because the machine will be forcing against this little lever forcing it in an anti-clockwise direction so 
um, a reverse thread is ideal in that situation. That's the bobbin case latch spring. We might not even need to take this bobbin uh, engaging lever out at all. Just be careful also when that piece there, when this piece here slides out of the way, this little piece can end up falling out. So let's just take that out. That should just pull straight out. Put a little finger on it. It goes up into the hole here. There's an Allen key grub screw on the shaft here. Let's see if I can get to that. So I've got the machine sort of standing up on the um, on its end here, and I've found the grub screw there for the for the bobbin winding engaging mechanism. Should be able to just undo that. Yep, and that's going to pop off there, just like that. And then that bar there should be able to just pull out. It's got a little spring on the end there. Yeah, so this lever here should come out now, but it's catching on this spring here. And that spring there is for the slide plate. So I'll take that off. There's a screw here. The screw head is actually inside here. And we're, we're actually screwing the other end of the screw, if you know what I mean. It's the inside part of the screw. So this is going to be reversed. So again, that's going to be loosened when we go clockwise and then you can just pull that spring out like that and that should allow this to come out uh, bob and winding engaging lever so yeah quite a good opportunity to clean some of these parts the next thing to do is a screw up here and that so this collar here, pull off, and that screw is tightened onto a flat spot on that shaft there. And now, yeah, that whole hook's going to come out now. Okay, just lift out, and there we go. So the whole gear's come off. This the gear should be around this metal part here, but it's still living down in here. <laughs> Get a pair of tweezers. Uh, it's a bit of a shame because I'm I'm betting these parts aren't available anymore. So there's the another part of broken gear, and here's the main bit. Yeah, so oh yeah, it's quite brittle, quite brittle. So the gear would sit around here like that but it's just falling apart it's a real shame piece of thread cord in there but anyway I'm assuming that these are the same through all of the models so I might just grab a, a hook out of another machine that's maybe got a broken cam stack and then it's just a matter of you know the reversal of what we've just done put this back in uh, except some timing, extra timing needs to be done. And this part here, for the bobbin winding mechanism, that looks like it's going to fail at some stage. So some of these parts, because they're sort of integrated with metal parts, nylon or plastic, some sort of plastic that they're using, I guess one way to sort of extend the life of this might be to maybe get some epoxy glue in there. But yeah, that's a shame that these parts are breaking like that. I thought, considering that these parts are no longer available, uh, well, I assume they're not. Uh, I haven't seen any for sale anywhere, apart from maybe second hand. I thought it might be worth sort of piecing this back together and maybe trying to epoxy glue the parts together. So I've painstakingly put all the bits together here to match them up. Well, it wasn't that painstaking actually. It only took a couple of minutes, but now I know the position for each of these parts. I was thinking of cleaning up the parts, clean the area here, clean all this, and maybe see whether epoxy glue will be strong enough to hold all of the parts together and put the machine back together. Because I was going to use a hook from the other 760 I've got that's got the broken cam stack gear, 
uh, but I've got plans for that machine. Yeah, so keep an eye out for for that. I sort of I got thinking while I was doing the straight stitching video. I was wondering, you know, could you use your machine still if you had a broken cam stack just for straight stitching type operations? And I think you can. So you know that that's the plan for the other 760. Is actually want to get that up and running just for straight stitching functions. So I thought I'd have a wee go at repairing this. This plastic is quite brittle, you know, that I think that was the cause of the problem. You know, the, the machine was just sewing along and then made a funny noise and, and then uh, gave up the ghost. Or it, it stopped stitching, yeah, jammed up and whatnot, so yeah. Okay, I've washed each piece here, just in uh, hot soapy water. And I actually had a couple of pieces fall apart on me so that you know this gear's um, been really close to disintegrating hopefully we can extend the life of the machine by repairing this gear it's worth a try so I've laid out the gear here in its contiguous parts just to make it easier to put together on the hook there so I'll go ahead and mix up some epoxy glue so that's just a one-to-one -one, part A to part B two-part epoxy And first of all, I thought I might have a go at um, strengthening this bobbin winder engaging mechanism. And it's cracking down here, so I'll try and get a bit of epoxy glue into there and hopefully extend its life. So I'm hoping the epoxy will get down into the crack there. If I leave it in this position here, Hopefully gravity will do its work and just pull some of that epoxy down into the gap there. So I'll leave that off to one side. So I'm just going to work my way around placing these parts of the gear onto the hook here and just gluing as I go. Uh, I don't want the glue coming out the front into where the, you know, the teeth of the gear are because that will obviously, you know, um, could dry hard and you know interfere with the meshing of the gears so I just want to be careful there so I'll be putting glue on this face which faces down onto this flat piece here and onto the inside face there which will attach to this angled piece here finished. There might be a little bit of residual epoxy in there which I guess when it's dry could cause a little bit of noise maybe but there's no sort of big clumps of it in there so I've cleaned it out as much as I can. So I'll leave that for probably about three days for it to cure properly because I don't want to strain it you know any sooner than three days I think the the initial cure time is around about 12 hours but I think the uh, you know the full cure time is about uh, 72 hours so um, we'll come back when that's dry and take another wee look at it and then uh, we'll do we'll fit it to the machine and see how it goes <laughs> If you like these videos, might I recommend other videos on the Singer 700 series sewing machines. And, as always, thank you very much for watching.